Betcha Kucha 280, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. So this week we're going to be talking about the first How to Draw book I ever bought, and I can only call it the gold standard in that every other book I've read is based on the fact I read this one first. Um, and I did want to learn how to draw comics the Marvel way, and if that's what you want to do, this is the book for you. Uh, originally written by Stan Lee and illustrated by John Basima or Basima or Bashima, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, in the late 1970s. Um, it's really a good book for thinking about comics. The book isn't really going to do too much for you in helping you to draw excellently. So it's an excellent overview of, of what you need and how you should go about things, starting with tools of the trade as they were employed in the 1970s moving into the 80s so everything is done on paper with drawing boards and when you ink you use an actual brush loaded up with black ink uh, something that i don't typically see in how to draw books is stanley explains the terms of the trade things like you know captions speech bubbles um, interestingly he doesn't mention onomatopoeia using the word onomatopoeia that is the the word people use for sound effects things like baff bop zip uh, and because this book is predominantly aimed at a younger audience or beginners in the field of you know art studies it kind of speaks at first about the idea of before you can draw all those superheroes you need to learn you know how to draw spheres and cubes uh, simple basic shapes and you make more complicated things from those shapes and thinking of more complicated uh, the book does cover in passing one point two point and three point perspective uh, this was all I knew about perspective for a very long time. It's not difficult to grasp the fundamentals, but to implement them intelligently takes a lifetime. Uh, that Richard E. Norling book I've already spoken about, excellent for this. Uh, this book does, every once in a while, uh, offer some very specific useful information. Uh, this is about how to make checkerboard flaws in perspective and how to rotate circles using squares this is great stuff uh, something this book does very well as well is whenever they explain the thinking behind something they link it back to actual panels from old marvel comics so you can see both the theory and the practice the way what is being explained has been used and how you can potentially use it in the future the book does actually spend a little bit of time discussing the proportions of a superhero uh eight and three quarters head tall is what stanley goes for which is remarkably taller than your average person because superheroes have to be super heroic in their both body language and just their actual stature uh, here this is illustrated by putting captain america next to an athletic normal looking person and how to draw the quote unquote marvel way is really emphasized on pages like this it's about over exaggeration it's about um, bold and dramatic storytelling as represented through figure drawing and camera angle choice uh, the book does also kind of introduce you to the idea of figure drawing through basic structure and then you fill up you fill in shapes on top on top of that basic structure and then you add the superfluous details like spider-man's webbing or iron man's armor decals uh, how to draw the marvel way is pretty much emphasized all in all on this page you know with this person throwing a punch um, you want to pick the most outlandishly over the top action to portray in every panel the the follow-through of the punch um and that's how you ensure that your art isn't boring it's bold it's dynamic and, and it's very appealing uh, both male and female heads and some basic anatomical information is imparted first the head um and you know it's all about square jaws small eyes and and, and strong eyebrows uh the women how to draw women i think is either two or three times longer in in the amount of time it's discussed because drawing women especially attractive young women is considerably harder than it is to draw square jawed uh, superhero type men the book does also spend time on the idea of panel composition the elements of a panel uh how you draw the eye how you make sure that the reader can follow what's going on uh, with it being busy enough to be enjoyable but not so busy people get lost in the noise 
the book does also touch on camera positioning during your storytelling exercises. On the left and the right is the same six panel story, one with on the left very flat direction and on the right a much more dynamic and bold camera positioning to really emphasize what's going on to the point where you don't need words, which is a true mark of excellent illustrative um, execution. The Marvel way is also denoted by Stan Lee coming up with a really basic plot synopsis, the artist having to draw it, and then Stan Lee comes back with the dialogue at the end. You are given the opportunity to kind of take one of his synopsises and try and draw that yourself. Examples of what John Bashima did are in the book. And then at the back, they talk a little bit about drawing comic book um, covers and how you want to emphasize something that's going to really try and get people to buy the book, make it leap off the shelves, so to speak. And then at the end, there's a little bit about inking and how you need to be careful how much black you apply because it's really good at drawing the eye where you want it to go. But too much can make uh, images very difficult to read, very difficult to follow. Uh, I would note that color would clean that up, but that's not really the point he's making. And God knows how they colored in the 70s when this book was written. So, uh, in conclusion, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way is an excellent book if you want to learn to draw comics the Marvel way. Um, it's written for a younger audience. I was the perfect audience for this at the time in my life where I bought it. Stan Lee goes to great pains to make sure everything that he is talking about is simple to follow and is easy to apply in your own journey to being a better narrative illustrator. Um, there is an emphasis on bold storytelling because that in essence is what the Marvel way is. It's about drawing cool stuff so people can go, wow! Um, as is typical with most how to draw books, because it covers a broad area of study, and each area of study requires more study, you aren't going to learn a great deal about how to apply perspective or anatomy uh, or anything else. But this will show you all of the main areas you should focus on for future investigation with specific books like the kind of thing Andrew Loomis or Bone Hogarth has made. Uh, one thing that is worth noting is this book is very, very old and the art is very, very dated. Because this book doesn't really teach you how to draw, it teaches you more how to think about how you draw, it's probably not going to do much for you one way or the other. But it is worth noting that because, you know, once you've read one or two how to draw books, you are typically looking for stylistic information. Uh, and this book is not going to help you in that area. But all in all, I would say this is an excellent book. Again, for people who want to know how to draw comics, this is this is a great introductory piece. And Stanley, um, I've read stuff he's written that's not so great, and I've read stuff he's written that really does stand the test of time. And this is on the, that second category. I don't, I'm not saying buy it, but I would de definitely recommend reading it if you have an interest in producing comic books the Marvel way. So that's the end of Petra Kutcher 280 and I'll see you next time.